Hello, everyone, and welcome to your favorite show. It's Local Chat. I'm your host, Will Crosby. It is the day of the week that it is. It's the 20th? It's the 20th of January, 2022. It's a Thursday. Joining me, as always, Ian Gibson. Hi, it's great to be back. I can't wait to talk about the upcoming games of 2023. We've got a big list to go through. It's going to be another long episode, but I am ready. I hate you. Also joining us, Kyle Bailey. It's me. Hi. Kyle Bayleaf, I want to call you. I love... You guys like bay leaves? I, I do like a, a nice bay leaf. Every time, every time I cook rice, I put a bay leaf in with it because uh, it keeps it nice and delicious. W- Will's uh, chef signature. Will's chef signature. Also, bay leaves great if you're making pickles because they, I forget what the thing is, but they keep whatever you're pickling rigid, hard, uh, and crunchy. Um, I'm rigid, hard, and crunchy about this week's news, folks. It's incredible. There's so much to talk about. Actually, there's nothing. Nothing happened this week. Um, I, 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 as some people may know, I work uh, for a company that deals in gaming news. And boy, GameStop. howdy, was yeah, I was just gonna say games. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Let's save it for the news segment. Let's tease these babies. I know I'm teasing. I was just saying Tuesday was a incredible day uh, in the busy life of Will Crosby. Um, but before red, we talk red. about the news, we've got to talk about what we've been playing. And I don't want to go first. I want Ian to go first because Ian has All a right. game on his list that I want to hear about. Ian Gibson, take it away. Um, so I've been bouncing around some games lately and I haven't really found anything that's stuck. But let me tell you something about a little thing called Xbox Game Pass. Turns out it's incredible. And um, this week was kind of special for them in a way because they had a whole bunch of stuff hit. Like, for example, uh, today, the 20th, they had Hitman 1, 2 and 3 um, hit the hit Game Pass. They had a whole bunch of uh, Death's Door, Outer Wilds came back recently, etc. Um, so I've been bouncing around between a lot of Game Pass games, but there's one game in particular that I've been playing. It came out on Tuesday. It's called Nobody Saves the World. Um, and uh, I, I'm just going to take them at their word. According to the Fire Skate cast, this is from the same people who made Guacamelee 1 and 2. And um, I, uh, look, I'm just going to lead out with it. It's a new process for this year, but this is going on the Game of the Year discussion list. Wow. Um, All right. Just just to bring people up to date, we're, we're keeping a list this year of games that are going to be in, in the running for game of the year, anybody on Subpixel can put a game on that list, and it basically tells everybody else you should absolutely try to play this game because we are going to discuss it end of the year. And nobody saves the world goes on this list. It's um, it's an RPG. It's top down. It's pretty. It's pretty action heavy. Um, you're kind of going around like like Diablo style almost, but but flat top down. It's got a cartoony look to it. I know all of that doesn't sound that great, but it's doing some crazy things. Number one. It's got a really good map. The map is almost Zelda-like because when you are wandering around the map, like you'll walk by and you'll see a wall and a chest on the other side of the wall. And you're like, how do I get over there? I got to remember. So when I go to the other area, I know that I know to backtrack that way. Or you see like a tunnel opening, but you can't get to it. And you're like, oh, go there. And you see all these different things. You see a door with a switch on the other side. You're like, I got to find the other side. You come to a body of water and you're like, I, I know there's something on the other side of this, but how do I cross it? I'll figure that out later. Maybe I'll get an ability. So it's really cool. It's got a nice sense of humor. All sorts of quests. I've seen some people talk about how this game, it just gets rid of grind. Because even though there is a lot of stuff for you to unlock and quote unquote grind towards, Mm -hmm. there is such a variety of gameplay and there's so many quests and so many different ways to earn XP. They even do a really cool thing where like, let's say you're going through a dungeon and you die halfway through the dungeon and they send you back to the outside of the dungeon. You keep all of the progress. So if you earn like 2000 XP so far clearing that dungeon... And then you die halfway through the dungeon. You keep that XP. They're not. They're not. They're not resetting you. They're just putting your position back, but they're not resetting your progress. Nice. So it's it. There's so much to do. So much to fun. The other thing is, this is the bonkers part. You're not playing as one character. Well, you are playing as one character. You have a magic wand that lets you shape shift. And what I mean by shapeshift is, I guess the easiest way to describe it is there's like a dozen different classes in the game. So at a moment's notice, you can change your class. And when you change your quote unquote class, or they call it forms in the game, you literally become a different creature. 
So one that I've been doing a lot lately is a rat. So I become a rat. <laughs> I become small so I can squeeze between places. Mm. My main attack move is a chew, which means I just like <laughs> on people and they get some poison effect. Like if you hit them like five times in a row, they get a poison effect on them. And it's, I'm literally just going around chewing people's ankles, but I'm so fast cause I'm a rat and it's a lot of fun. But then as you, there's all these like quests, I mean, they call them quests, but they're basically like XP unlock challenges and they're, they're on the character on the, on the game, but they're also on the class. So for example, when I'm playing as the rat, it's like, Hey, give 10 people poison. And, and it's on the side of your screen all the time. And it's just like, boop, 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 10 points. Okay. We're going to give you form points, which is XP for your form. And now you have a second attack. So now I have a second one where if I bite somebody, uh, 30% of the damage I do comes back as health. And then it's like, oh, but if I do that when they're poisoned, then it gives me bonuses. And then as you're, as you're playing more of the character, you're unlocking more of the abilities for that character. Um, but they're each pretty unique. Like there's a really ugly mermaid that does like, like she throws water or she builds water up near her and thirst mm -hmm. it. And then, um, this is not a spoiler, but a couple hours into the game, there was this crazy moment where basically you meet this guy and the guy's like, Oh, I know. I remember who it is. It's a hammer. It's a talking hammer. And the hammer's just like, Hey, you know, your wand's broken. Let me fix it for you. And he just does this animation where his, his nose is the hammer face, like the flat part of the hammer. And he just goes, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and he slams his nose on the ground <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, here's your wand. It's fixed now. And you're like, what? And it does a little tutorial and it shows you, hey, for each of your forms, the main attack, like, like for the rat, it's the chew. You can't change that. But your three other attack slots, you can use anybody else's attacks. And your passives, you could use from any other class. Wow. So it becomes this crazy bonkers thing where you're like, oh, the rat does poison damage. But I also want, I, it doesn't really have a lot of range. So I want to do the, the ranger's attack, which is shoots a bunch of arrows and it's sharp. But then I also need this other guy's and I need this passive so I regain mana faster. So you're literally just like rebuilding and respecting the classes. Yeah. And it's just, it's. It's so much fun. It's it's just like a really good um, like action adventure, just top down Diablo type thing. But it gives you so much freedom and so much creativity. Like one of the forms is a horse and he, his main attack. I haven't unlocked anything else for him yet because I haven't really played him. His main attack is a kick, which only does behind him. So if you walk up to people and you kick, you don't hit them. <laughs> so you have to back into people to kick them. No, and I just I haven't done anything with them. I just unlocked an egg and his main attack is egg roll where you roll into people but it says if you roll into walls on accident you take a bunch of damage so, so it's just like, like all these really wonky weird mechanics and the fact that they let you mix and match it and they've started introducing kind of like puzzle battles where they're just like hey we're throwing three different enemy types at you this one only takes sharp damage this one only takes poison damage so you got to either build a single character that has all the damage types or you've got to be able to quick swap the forms it's it's really really good highly recommend um yeah I, I mean i mean it's on game pass i believe it's on pc and xbox 100 percent recommend it it's going on the list so y'all should definitely try and play it it's it's a lot of fun that's awesome yeah, I, i'm just oh, go looking at it i'm just looking at it right now on steam and it looks really fluid um i really dig yeah. the animation style it looks pretty sick and then yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like every time you talk up this passionately about a game and then you say a little bit into the game something happens, like that's exactly what you said with inscription. So I'm sort of primed yeah. now to be like, okay, maybe this is a contender, maybe this is a good thing. Yeah. So yeah. it looks I mean it, it looks pretty sweet. I don't normally do top down stuff. Um but I don't either, but this one feels really good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um it, and it's I mean being on Game Pass it's great. And um, it's definitely one of those games where I can just sit down on the couch and I play it for like 45 minutes, an hour straight. Like it's just time goes by. It's nice and relaxing. You're always unlocking things. You're always discovering new things to do. You've always got 10 different things you can do or unlock at once. So it's it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Also, the commitment with which you reenacted that 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 it thing. Yes. Hilarious. I mean, it, you just brought you. It was, it was like, incredible. It was like watching, it's like watching it was Mammoth. Just, you know? I had to. It was just so funny that the guy that's a hammer and he just keeps whacking his head into the ground. Anyways, play the game. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Kyle, what games have you been playing? 
Uh, well, speaking of inscription, uh, I did actually go back and replay it. Uh, so good. So wonderful. Um, I couldn't well, get it up. One I question. Couldn't... Yeah. Sorry. So there were rumors that uh, Daniel Mullins was going to release an endless mode only in Leshy's Cabin. Do you guys know if that's happened yet? I, I think believe it's, a... it's already Commun out. It's a community thing, right? It was like a... I think no, it's out in beta. Okay. Maybe, maybe, there may maybe be a right, Yeah, there may be a mod for it, but but he was I think he literally he said there are Casey's fewer mod. bugs yeah, there yeah, are yeah. fewer bugs on launch than I was expecting. And so I'm working on a new mode instead of yeah. having to fix it, production bugs. Kyle just said a Casey's mod. Isn't Casey's mod by him and it's just called that? Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it, it, it is community. It, it very well may be by him. I, there are updates to Casey's mod, like patches that he has made. So I'm assuming that it's him. And there it looks like officially licensed artwork. Yeah, too. yeah. So, um, yes, I, I know it's, I think you have to upgrade to the beta version or something, I think, in order to get access oh, yeah. to it. In Steam. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I went back and, and played it through again. So good. And it, it, it plays, it does play a little differently, like knowing what's going to happen, obviously, as any story mm -hmm. with, with, with a, an unfolding like inscriptions, it, it's, it's going to, you know, hit differently. But the gameplay still super solid, still super fun, still super daniel mullins uh which is which is what we want nice. and then finally i went back yesterday 9 p.m on subpixel live and mm -hmm. and tried to beat assassin's creed odyssey and that game will <laughs> not end it keeps I, going i was gonna I've, say did you did you think you were near the end or did you just figure i've got time in it and, I, and i'll finish it soon so i thought the ending was like you you there's this atlantis um more set uh it's it's not dlc <laughs> well there's an atlantis yeah there's an atlantis more set uh, dlc which is great because mm -hmm. you play as atlantis which is super you know it's a it's a big it's mm -hmm. a big step forward um but anyway <laughs> there's this like sort of you go and fight different mythological creatures to gain parts of the key that you need to unlock or lock atlantis i don't actually know what the story is at this point because it's so damn confusing and I did all four or all five of like the, the challenges that I need. I beat Medusa, which Will watched. It's true. Um, I beat I beat the Minotaur. I beat the Sphinx, um, which was kind of sad because you solve her riddles and then she just straight up dies. And it looks really <laughs> painful for her. Nice. She's just like she just like keels over. And I'm like, I didn't want her to die. Like she could kept great. going. Um, and then there's one other one that I can't remember. Oh, um, uh, I can't remember what it is. You go down to Atlantis with all these keys Pythagoras is your father apparently that's the thing um, what a square yeah yeah <laughs> good yeah good uh, math joke good one um he's like oh I don't want to do this and you're like you've lived too long old man give me your your um this, this like magical staff that he old has. man and then and you do that and then suddenly the game's like no 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 guess what we've got in store for you another Ubisoft presents Here's the next DLC, and it unlocks this completely separate world of pseudo oh. pseudo fantasy, not Atlantis. It's like I forget what it's called. Elysium. You're you're in Elysium with and Matt I Damon. Like, space yeah. station. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know Neil Blomkamp's there. He's just like Man, I directing. It's good. <laughs> um, but it's this. It's a whole other map with like places to explore and like all, and like new new enemy types. <laughs> I've already sunk. I'm not kidding. Looking it up right now, I have played 97.6 hours. Dear and I God. still have another eight hours or so to go. This game God. will not end. It's the best, you know, for, for what I paid for it. I think I paid like $14 oh, yeah. for it. Definitely got my money's worth. But oh my God, it doesn't know when to stop. That is it, it wild. It just keeps going. I thought I was going to hit credits on that's what I was trying to do. I was like, oh, let me just get through this. And nope, completely, completely other DLC that Jeez. I didn't even know I had. I, I had no idea. I'm very jealous of you because I feel like I am not wired to do that with a game anymore. I say that versus I have 150 hours in RimWorld, but I <laughs> feel like I I need to get back to that because that that feels like high school will did that. And I, I would like a game to do that to me again. 
Um, so, it doesn't have to be a great game because obviously you don't think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the greatest game in the history of the world, but it's engaging it's, it's you. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, engaging it's you at that time. percentage that you're just like boom. But on the other hand, you're still pissed off that you you have more to go in it. I I just it it literally not to be punny about it, but it feels played out. Like I I was ready for it to be done, yes. and now it's yes. like God, like damn, I have another map to clear, and it's just I don't know. I, I I tend to be with these big open world games. I'm a little bit of a completionist, especially with story stuff. I want to make sure I get the best ending. I want to make sure I do all the cool little intricate stories that they have. I don't care so much about the little tiny side quests that are repetitive, but the big ones that they've sunk a lot of time into, I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. This just feels like I've done that already. And another team took over at Ubisoft and we're like, hey, we can do this cool thing that kind of sort of works within the context of the story where like you're pl- it's like it's like Inception because you're playing a girl in modern yeah, times imagine. and then you're playing. Yeah, <laughs> you're playing. No, I like Inception. Um, you're playing a girl. I forget what her name is. Then you play as Alexios through her. And then now you're playing as Alexios in a different world as uh. it's so con- and like the Greek gods are there, but they're assholes, which is kind of you know that that's spot on that's good um but oh my god it's just it's exhausting at this point I'm i feel exhausted like just just hearing about this game because i yeah like, that's all people <laughs> were talking about was like it's not as good as origins and it's way too big and long yeah. and it's just like why would you do that you know but it sounds like it's consistently way too big and long like it's not like some drop-off point where it's just like shut up or it's just like (laughs) the turns awful like you're having a good time yeah riding that big long game the whole way um and that's just that's exciting so you're finished (laughs) finished. i finished yeah no it's it's exciting to like there's definitely a level of detail and polish in there that's really nice to see and the yeah. the world the world of Elysium the map of Elysium is actually it's a circle, so it's it's just like More a straight a up like yeah, yeah a flat get circle. It, get it, get it. Yeah. <laughs> Time is a flat circle. Um, so it's it's a nice sort of difference in pace, and there are different sections you can open up. Whereas when yeah. you start Odyssey, it's just it's, it's Greece. I mean, it's literally just like yeah. here's ancient Greece, and it's it's so Oof. overwhelming. This at least feels manageable and if it was its own game i'd be like oh cool this is sweet but this is coming off of i hit elysium at like 93 hours and i just i I don't know like is there more because when i bought the game it was like the game of the year edition so i guess it comes with everything but i just oh my god i am so tired um well speaking of um well first i wanted to say since ian completely skipped me I just wanted to say that um, I'm interested in Nobody Saves the World. I actually installed it because I saw you playing it, and I was like, I'm installing this because either he's going to say it's awful and I just uninstall it, or he's going to say it's great, and then I installed it because I had seen Dan Reichert also say it was pretty good. So uh, looking forward to that. Why is that wasn't a joke? Um... (laughs) <laughs> what you, what is, you, I'm in a mood tonight. Okay? I know you are. I don't know what um, the mood is. So, um, I had a I had a segue. I lost it. Anyways, I've been playing a lot of video games because I'm trying to play more video games instead of stagnating. Um, I started, uh, or sorry, I finished the Forgotten City. Um, I there's four endings to that game. I'm pretty sure I got the third ending, but I don't have the achievement for it. But I'm not going back to get it. Um, but I did the final exactly. ending to that, and boy, howdy, does the end of that game go places. I was absolutely not expecting what what happened. Um, I mean, I was, but also the manner of it, the way I was expecting the thing to happen, but the way they explain everything, I was not expecting. Uh, I thought it was really neat. That game removes all the pitfalls of uh, time loop games where as soon as you figure out a thing, when you re-enter the next loop, you just tell the guy to go do it for you, uh, yeah, which actually great. plays back into the story, uh, which is nice. really, really, really cool. Um, Forgotten City, highly recommend it. It's on Game Pass. Go play it. Um, I played a little bit of Project Zomboid over the weekend, um, decided that game is good, it's well-featured, um, 
but it's not something you can just jump into multiplayer with. I think you have to actually learn that game single player for a while mm-hmm. before you're like jumping in with other people. Um, because it's just like you don't know what you're doing, and I would like to know what I'm doing. Um, Immortals Phoenix Rising, speaking of uh, Greeks, um, I played two hours of this game before I Ian Gibsoned it and said, I didn't say this game was awful. Um, Immortals Phoenix Rising is literally Greek Zelda Breath of the Wild um with zero yeah. story i mean with good story and everything but there's nothing in that that is pulling me in to play more of it the gameplay is average the story is average it is a perfectly great well-made game i just do not want to continue playing it yeah. um because it just makes me want to go play breath of the wild um yeah yeah because i think i got about about 3 or 4 hours in and i was like hey this is a solid 7 but it's not quite good enough for me to continue to put hours into it yeah um and then whoo sorry i have so many i was like trying a lot of games and i also just want to like touch on them uh but i did start and finish within a day because i had monday off the gunk from uh I believe formerly image and form games who made all of the steam world games they are now thunderful uh a b because they're part of the Thunderful family now. They they got renamed. Kind of like the way Nintendo's internal stuff is named. Um, overall, I think the gunk is the perfect uh, EP, LP album to prove that they can make 3D games. Um, yeah. It was a nice contained story. There were obvious... Um, like limitations where they weren't quite focused on like, Hey, let's make all these cutscenes look really great. And the characters look great. And some sort of like, there wasn't that final bit of polish on it. So that's why it kind of felt like, Hey, we just want to try to make a 3d game to see if we can do it. And this is what they pushed out. The gunk sucking mechanic is really good. Um, I found myself just like walking around cleaning up the gunk when I didn't necessarily need to. Um, and the overall story I thought had some holes in it, um, but it the game is super linear. I beat it in five hours uh, and you're just on a track uh, the whole way. And uh, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm missing one achievement and I ugh, I'm so mad uh, and I can't get I, it. I, I got to say, I was a little disappointed with the gunk just because when they did Steam World Dig, Steam World Dig 2, like the cool things about those games for me was that they were so well mechanically designed. Like they knew, they knew exactly how a gamer wants to interact with the game. And it was like, Hey, you can see an area, but you can't quite get there yet. Or, Hey, here's an ability and an area for which you to, you know, practice that ability and then to do it a little bit more. And then once you master it, you can get here. Here's a really nice skill tree for you to explore. Here's a couple directions for you to go at all times. And I feel like the gunk is it's too linear, not just in terms of you're moving forward in a linear fashion, but also it felt like the upgrades were pretty linear. And it just, I think if it was anybody else, I'd be like, Hey, great job. But knowing that this studio really explores more of an open game type where there's a whole bunch of different mechanics and different areas. And like, you can go down here, do this challenge. You could do that. You can do it out of order, etc. to see them go back to something linear. It's, it's a little disappointing. Yeah, I, and that's kind of why I preface it by saying I feel like uh, I, I don't know. any. I should look into it, but I feel like this is like, hey, you five people go make this to see if we can do it because uh, we have a bigger yeah. idea and we want to nail that bigger idea. So let's get this little one out of the way. And that's why it's yeah. like, I think that is why it's the way it is. It's just like, hey, we have all the framework for this. We can do it. Let's move forward with this this next idea. Yeah. Um. And then finally, uh, I jumped, I was watching an old Giant Bomb video where they were playing uh, Middle Earth Shadow, sorry, Middle Dash Earth colon Shadow of Mordor. Uh, Middle Dash Lowercase Earth. Yes, Lowercase Earth uh, colon Shadow (laughs) of Mordor. And I was like, oh, I should, I should play that game. Like, it looks fun, like the combat looks fun. It's the Batman combat because it's WB. I was like, oh, I'll go play that. So I loaded up. I've got like 
I'm like 45 minutes in, which is perfect because it's literally what I just watched and what I've played before. And I load it in, and boys, that game is good. I'm having a grand old yeah. time with it. Uh, I'm like three or four, or five hours in now, just doing missions, killing orcs. Um, I feel like the first couple times I tried it, I just didn't get the flow right. And I was like trying to brute force my way into that game, and it's not kind of not how you're supposed to play. So, so that, that's exactly my experience with it. And I haven't touched it since it came out, but I played like probably four or five hours and I was like, I don't get it. Like, yeah, I, I just I felt like I felt like also it was really difficult at the time. I don't know if yes. maybe that was just me not being not being into it or if it actually is that difficult. But I was like, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Like it, it was sort of like a one step forward, two steps back sort of thing for me. Um, but that's good to hear that coming back to it is sort of like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, so it is pretty difficult. Like you can't like you feel like you could just go into a group of enemies and kill them all, but you really like at the beginning you can't. And you got to kind of yeah. plan things out and stealth things. Um there's it's weird uh I think because this game originally came out I believe 360 slash it was like on the crossover generation. It's mm -hmm. like super you feel really close to your character. And I don't know if that's because like TVs now are way bigger and if it was made today, they would have zoomed out a lot more, but it just like feels so close. And then the like movement uh, at certain points feels very like not responsive. Like I mo like uh, yeah. like purposefully laggy, like he's lumbering and that annoys me. But once I got past that, um, we kind of opened up and really the, the impetus for all this other than seeing it being played was I really wanted to like get to know the nemesis system because I've never dealt with that before. And it's 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 really quite unique in like gathering the intel and figuring out who is part of who and like when a, when a guy you fought before finds you again. And I, I think that's why that difficulty is there. A lot of the times is so like a, a, a normal orc will kill me. And then hours later, I will see him. He'll have been promoted for killing me and then duel another captain, kill that captain and get promoted again. So like I, I encounter him like four hours later and he's like twice as powerful now. And he was just an orc guarding a building at the very beginning. So, um, yeah, I think it's cool. I think, I think Shadow of Mordor is a lot like Immortals Phoenix Rising, where it's like when it comes to combat mechanics and world and uh story it's like solid seven but the difference is they have that nemesis system they have something that is very good very unique and keeps you you know very interested and wanting to continue to play the game whereas immortals phoenix rising didn't it didn't have that hook it didn't have that that interesting little spice in it hmm. no it did not um so yeah that's kind of all the games i've been playing i'm like i said i'm trying to play i'm trying to just like Instead of seeing a game and being like, oh, I'll put that on the shelf to play later. I'm just like trying to grab it and play it immediately. Um, also, Will Crosby, you're a liar. Because I'm a liar? I know, you played, I know you played another game that you didn't put on this list. Honey Is Cop? it? God of War. <laughs> Only oh, because we talked about it. <laughs> yes. I, actually, I know you said you were doing, you were doing it for work, but... Uh, yes, uh, I... <laughs> I got that expense today, which was great. Hey. Uh, I was playing God of War for work. Um, man, that game on the lowest settings on the PC still looks great. Um, mm. And on the highest yeah. settings looks great. And uh, when I hacked it to make the potato mode video, still kind of <laughs> looks great, to be honest. Um, yeah. It's kind of crazy how good that game looks. Uh, and I, you can... I, I, I just want to say, just remember, that is a PS4 game. So the bar, the bar was kind of low in the first place, you know? Right. But I, I'm just saying it like, it just noticeably looks good, you know, yeah, yeah. like the texture yeah. work is really good. Um, and you can run that game off of just a CPU with some Ryzen systems, which, which is, is yeah, which is pretty wild. Um, yes, I did, but I also played Ian isn't going to like this. I also played some railway empire and I bought it so far. I, you know, you know what I think, Ian? I think that Steam processed my refund and I got all my money back. <laughs> wow, really? Not bad. I got 29 minutes into it and I said the same thing I said with Anno 1880, which is this game's good. I think I could learn to like this game. 
but I don't want to play it right now, and I don't have time to play it right now, so I'm going to refund it. See, okay, look. The, uh, I think you made a mistake only because 29 minutes into the game, it unlike anno it takes about 60 minutes to understand the game so it's it's not like it's not like it doesn't take a long time to get used to the game you were right on the cusp of understanding it no well i had a lot of your knowledge from watching you dad yeah uh and playing it and stuff and i think i was there it's just like i i was because i like understood the system and stuff i got i was almost done with that first mission uh and i yeah. and i i liked it enough like honestly if i if i was wanted to play it again i would just buy it again um yeah, yeah but it's just like i it's, I, it's, I don't want i it's don't fun. need that i don't need that investment game right now like to yeah to eat time so i'm not gonna I'm not gonna stick with That's it fair. you know um but it is a great game anyone listening to this great game uh buy that for a dollar uh folks uh that was the games we have been playing which means it's time to move into the news which means it's time to play the news theme which means I haven't played this news theme in like six months. Um... Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up news? What is up news? Um, I don't really think any news happened this week. Just kidding. Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard insanity or is, is attempting to is attempting to, to acquire for 69 billion dollars nice. nice um oh. just look i look this this is like 9 11 i want to hear <laughs> where you were and what you were doing <laughs> when you heard the news <laughs> this is so big it's so huge i'll go first okay i'm so happy you qualified I, that <laughs> this is tuesday morning Woo. tuesday morning i start work a little bit early because i have like a 9 a.m meeting so i like to start work early so i can prep for the meeting that i run at 9 a.m and so i was just like wake up breakfast like do this do that and i look at my phone at like 8 47 and i was just like i see nebelian on Twitter has posted this and I look, I don't know about you guys, but if you see that image Microsoft put out, it looks, it looks like a believable Photoshop. So I literally stared at it for 10 seconds and I was like, I can trust this person, but there's no way this is real. <laughs> and then I like clicked into it and I was like, Oh my God, I clicked out. And then I went to the discord and I think I said, Oh my God at everyone. And I posted it. It was insane. It was, it's so crazy. This is, I was literally just for like the entire morning, just going, Oh my God, <laughs> this is crazy. It's bonkers. What about you guys? Um, I woke up, I checked my phone. I usually go on Twitter when I wake up or Reddit. I think I went on Twitter and I saw, I don't know what I saw. I might have seen the Microsoft tweet and mm -hmm. I immediately shot up and I went to my work Slack and the news Slack was just like crazy. And I just went, <laughs> Karen, I think Microsoft just bought Activision Blizzard. <laughs> and I like ran over to the bathroom to tell her like she cares. Oh um, Kyle, do, how'd you find out? <laughs> I found out through um, the Onion <laughs> of all places, <laughs> nice um, because they they did they did some sort of an article about it was like reacting to the fact that it had happened like two hours before or whatever, and I was like, oh, that's funny. Like that would be funny if Microsoft actually bought Activision. And then literally mm -hmm. like three tweets down from that, I saw like the Polygon like headline for it, yeah. and I was like, I I thought that I was like, is this a crossover? Like, yeah. Are, like are they doing some? Is this some sort of like meta thing? Not that meta, like the actual meta. Oh um, my god. And I I literally was like, okay. And then like a few hours after that. Digital Foundry released their sort of reaction video to the news. And that's when I knew I was like, this is actually happening. Or, well, I mean, it's in yeah. the process of actually happening. But yeah, I, I thought that was pretty funny that I found that through the onion of all places. But yeah, it's just like like everybody was going bonkers about it because this is this is big news. This is by far, I believe, 5X, the largest, most expensive gaming merger and acquisition in the history of video games, it's Activision, it's Blizzard, and it's King who does Candy Crush. Um, Microsoft has been on a buying spree. Activision has been down. 
because of all the uh, sexual harassment scandal and and more importantly, their god awful handling of it. Um, Go figure. So, that's a bad thing. Also, this was a yeah. week after the previous largest video game acquisition yeah. for twelve billion for buying. Was it Zynga? It was Take Two and Zynga. Or ta- yeah, Take Two and Zynga. It's wild. Yeah. So, like, like I, I uh, tell me about your your thoughts on this because me personally, look, I love Game Pass. It's really, really good, and we've always said for years and years and years now that Microsoft's biggest weakness is they don't have enough exclusives. They don't have enough like part like first party studios and enough third party studio strong partnerships to have like constant, steady first party exclusive games either on existing IPs or new IPs, and. It's you can try and build up your own studios or you can go out and acquire studios. And this is them continuing to make good on that big weakness they have by going out and buying some studios. And this makes a lot of sense. Activision has a lot of fantastic studios that are working on god awful games. And they also have a lot of great IPs in their back catalog back catalog. So like for Xbox to come in, they've treated all their acquisitions great so far for them to come in and just like basically take the chains off all those studios and presumably let them go crazy with new IPs or old IPs. I'm all for it. I, I love it because again, it's Game Pass. These are going to come to me. These games are coming to me. I've already, I've already paying for them. I, it's yeah. not like all of a sudden I'm going to have, you know, new sixty dollars, seventy dollars games I got to buy every month. No, these games are coming for me. I'm excited. This is great. Great news. I um, I'm also excited. Mostly, like a lot of stuff has come out since it first was reported on Tuesday. Uh, they had been actually talking about it for a while, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then also the fact that, uh, a lot of the, the main impetus of the acquisition is to get access to a lot of those old IPs to revive stuff, to bring it to game pass. Um, Phil Spencer, like mentioned, uh, guitar hero and a bunch of other like older IPs, which is great. Um, and also came out like, uh, I think he tweeted today about um, Sony Sony. saying they met with Sony saying they're, they're keeping uh, all of the current uh, uh, contracts and all that sort of stuff. And that they would strive to have call of duty uh, available on Sony systems because uh, I mean, that kind of just makes sense whether they mean all call of duty or new call of duty or just Warzone. You don't know, but I assume I, I and I see Microsoft anyways changing up how any of those things from Activision or Blizzard works. Um, yeah, whether it be more or less yearly Call of Duties, which I feel like they're going to get rid of that right away. And I, and and finally, I just think this is the best best case scenario. And I see a lot of people phrasing this for Activision Blizzard employees yes. um, to solve these issues and get bobby Kotick out of there and get all the the harassment and the bad people out of there because they don't deserve to be there um because you shouldn't treat people shittily uh in little italy uh kyle what are your thoughts this is the disney buying fox moment of video games this is this is not just a good business decision for microsoft but also like it's it's something that's going to take three to five years to sort of us start seeing the results of um Mm -hmm. i think like i said i think it's a good business move i i don't know if i'm a fan of the consolidation of ips into one sort of big huge massive conglomerate um i i just worry about like studios keeping their semi-independence from microsoft but i think so far Microsoft has done a really excellent job with the studios that they have acquired. Um, Again, it's, we're still in the process of seeing they, you know, the past three years, they've acquired a lot of different studios. And I think we're, we're on like the precipice of a lot of interesting releases coming from Microsoft. And this is, this is the start of another wave of that in the future. So I'm interested to see what happens. I think that if you look at it from the perspective of what Disney did with Fox, Disney is going to do its own thing. Like Disney is going to have its standards. I think Microsoft acts very differently. And obviously they would because they're in a completely different industry. Disney has almost no hold within the video game industry, um, which is kind of sad because they used to. And um, I, I, I'm interested, but cautious and maybe a little pessimistic more so than, than you two. But I do think that for Activision and for the people working there, this is, 
only a good thing. And I actually saw a tweet from, it was one of the developers, um, or a, a programmer who used to work at Microsoft left to work at a company owned by Activision. Oh, yeah. And then a day later, it was like announced yeah. that Microsoft bought it. And it was it wild. Was like, yeah, that was, that was the reason why. It was because they really wanted to just <laughs> lure that over him. But yeah, I, I, I think overall, I'm I'm very excited, and I do think it's a very good thing for for the people working at Activision who want yeah. to make games that aren't super, you know, microtransactiony or just or the whole point of them existing is is to make money. I think that there's a lot there's a lot more artistic integrity within the company than you would believe if you just listen to Bobby Kotick. So, also, fuck yeah, Bobby Kotick. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I I, I think. I, I definitely understand kind of where you're coming from and also the people who are even more negative than you on this and saying like monopolies are bad. This is a terrible thing. I kind of understand that uh, concern, but I just think about Vicarious Visions, right? So they were a studio. They did the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 remake recently. They were doing fantastic work on their own, but because they are part of Activision, they recently got essentially dissolved. Put on, put on COD duty, right? No, worse. They got put on the Diablo 2 remaster. Oh, yeah. They got okay. put I, on remember, so late. I can remember which franchise, but they, they got dissolved into Blizzard, which is stagnant. They got put on Diablo 2 remaster, which was close to release in a bad state and came out in a bad state. Like that's an incredible studio that was making things work. And they essentially got punished um, in a way. And like th like I said, taking the chains off, that's what it feels like. Microsoft doesn't treat their studios like that, mm -hmm. um, e even these studios they've acquired. So this is this is a whole lot of talent. This is a whole lot of people that are doing fantastic work. Like, I'm not crazy about the Call of Duty games, but the fact that they are putting out games of that quality every single year yeah. is bonkers. Like, there is a lot of fantastic talent and ideas and creativity in Activision Blizzard King that is being stifled by profit right now. And I, I think Microsoft is real. This is, this is beneficial because it's not like I, I don't see Microsoft owning them being any worse than what they were already. Mm. And that, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, just to, uh, just get my point on this, as far as the monopoly stuff, I feel like, and this can go both ways. First of all, there's a lot of video game developers out there. Uh, and yeah. and uh, actors and Blizzard did not own all of them. Second um, point that just ran from my head is, man, I don't I don't have it anymore. Was it about it. RimWorld? It was about RimWorld and how great RimWorld is. No, my second point uh, is as far as a monopoly. I feel like oh, that's what it was. A lot of people who are saying the monopoly thing are are some of those either satirically or scarily seriously uh, fanboys of Sony who are just trying to be like, oh, uh, how could you do this? They, I want those games, yeah. blah, blah. And it's like, that's the one thing I hate that this kicks up is that more of that sort of, oh, Xbox collecting dust, man. Xbox collecting dust. We're playing, I saw someone kept saying that on Twitter and I was like, please, sir. It definitely yeah. brings out the the fanboy nature and and some weird sort of like defensiveness from both sides. I think yeah, you no, know, it's it's very us versus them. Which, for clarification, I do not own an Xbox console or a Microsoft console in any way or a Sony console in any way. I have a PC and Nintendo, which you know, I mean, PC I guess is you know technically Microsoft, but um, it's. There's no there's no reason for that. There's no reason to have a sort of us versus them mentality when it comes to businesses that you are paying your money into. Like you are giving your money to these businesses and you get to decide who you support and who you don't. But mm -hmm. you don't have to be antagonistic about it. You don't have to be um, yeah. really hyper defensive about it or ab about something that that isn't yours. Like I, I don't know. There's a weird yeah. sort of ownership over over companies that people feel the need to defend and it happens in every industry i mean disney fanatics are insane star wars you know any 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 sort of big franchise that has its naysayers and its defenders so uh it's just it's very strange and you're right about that like as someone who owns both of the latest consoles um i let the console speak for themselves and there's one of those consoles i play more right now and the one that's collecting dust is the one that everyone defends <laughs> Um, and we were just talking about this the other day, like candidly, not even just because it came up. 
like there's Xbox has the Xbox Play Anywhere, where it's like I buy a game once, I can play it on my Xbox, I can play it on my PC, I have cross save, I can go play it on my Xbox One or S- Series S, I can go to my friend's house, sign in, play it there, versus half the time I don't know if I'm downloading the PS4 or PS5 version of a game on the PlayStation 5. It's like there's there's these companies are trying to set themselves up and I feel like Microsoft is hitting all the right notes this so far and this is just another another ballad in that in that note playing but it's not it's I don't uh, what you say it's not good enough good good analogy oh good analogy but I'm not sitting there at the end of the day going yeah Xbox is so much better than Sony um uh, I mean they are I but am. I mean, they're killing it. They I are, mean, they're killing I, it. I, but I, I'm not like I'm not getting trolling the forums, being like, "Hey, no. idiots!" Like, I'm happy when I get to play a game on my PS5. I'm happy when I get to play a game on my Switch. Uh, it's like whatever, dude. Uh, I just I like I feel like I feel like it was Colin Moriarty. You know, actually, you guys keep going. I want to look up this thing that he said because it was so do it. God do damn. It. Uh, bef- while said. you're doing that, I just wanted to read a list of IPs Microsoft now owns thanks to this acquisition. Again, if the acquisition goes through, uh, I think it's about a year before it could. It, it's a year timer. It could finish before that, but the timer is July 2023. I think is about when it would finish. Do you have the, you have your quote, sir? I have the quote. This is from uh, Colin Moriarty, who um, he does a lot of. He does Colin's last stand on Patreon, etc. Um, he also hosts a podcast called Sacred Symbols, which is all about PlayStation. And he said, quote, in purchasing Activision and choosing brute force over creativity, Microsoft <laughs> has officially entered malign influence territory. My only hope is that Sony won't follow suit. But they probably will. And it's like, what? what do you mean over creativity? Like... <laughs> Like, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to take their meager handful of studios now and just and just keep putting out no exclusives every year. Like, no, they've got to build up to then have their creative output. And it's just like this is this is ridiculous because I I guarantee you, I guarantee you every time that Sony purchases Naughty Dog or one of those other AAA studios. Granted, it's not as big a purchase, but it's it's the exact same thing. And you don't see these people complaining about it. Like, just get out of your fanboy camp and recognize that, like, number one, this is great. Because Game Pass is an incredible deal, and this makes it even better. Yeah. And number two, Activision Blizzard King was stagnant. Both Activision and Blizzard King was never good. Anyways, Candy Crush sucks. But Activision and Blizzard used to be great. Call of Duty used to be incredible. They used to have Guitar Hero. Blizzard used to have some incredible games. And literally pretty much every single IP across both of those companies is in the trash because of how they run that. Now, just think about it. We talked about it. They need to stop doing annual Call of Duty. They need to refresh that. They need to bring Guitar Hero back in a fresh way. They need to, somebody needs to go into Blizzard and bring back their IPs, but in a better way than they've been doing lately. And it's like, that's what this is. This is a win for gaming. Yeah. No matter which way you look at it, it's a win, period. But Ian, I just want to say, I think Colin has a great point that I just want to bring up, which is I like you keep buying Gundam but I don't understand why you don't just make them yourself with that creative brain of yours. Yeah. Look, we don't need to talk about how like the 12 models I have that I haven't been able to make yet. OK, we will do a gun plus stream soon. We already agree. But I'm saying it. sell those back because you're you're stifling, you're brute forcing your creativity. I'm YouTube, upset. I should, I should make them from scratch. I should. That's only what I'm saying. Them. And Kyle, only you keep buying them. these prints. Just design them yourself. Don't put make them on your wall. Records. Make your own. I actually can't think about doing. Make I, your I own. Buy them from Jake Terrio. That's why. Oh. Make your own records. You malign influence. Um, <laughs> I, can we start using that as our, uh, our subconscious yes. insult? Can we just rename the show "Malign Influence"? Malign influence. <laughs> Um, awesome. yeah, I wanted to read this list of IPs that Microsoft might uh, may own through this acquisition. Also, this website proudly says the full list of video games IP that Microsoft now owns, which looking through this is absolutely not true, but there's some big <laughs> ones here. Um, so they own Call of Duty, Candy Crush, Crash Bandicoot, Diablo, DJ Hero, Empire Earth, Gabriel Knight, Woot Woot, uh, Geometry Wars, Guitar Hero, uh, Gun, <laughs> If you remember that game, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, Hexen, Interstate 76, King's Quest, Laura Bow or Bow Ministries, Mysteries, 
<laughs> yes, Mara they own a church. Um, the Lost Vikings, Overwatch, Phantasmagoria, Pitfall, Police Quest, Prototype, Quest for Glory, Singularity, Skylander, oh, Soldiers of Fortune, Space yes! Quest, Spyro Ooh, the Dragon, back. Starcraft, oh. Tenchu, uh, Time Shift, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, True Crime, World of Warcraft, and Zork. Very That's happy. A good list. Zork is back under the microphone. definitely happy about Zork. Just man, like like I keep coming back to it, but just think about it. All those IPs that were either stagnant or abandoned slash dead, and now Microsoft is taking a fresh look at it and going, we can take any one of those and give them to any of our studios and say to them, hey have fun with it because that's what they've been doing and that sounds incredible Ooh, baby daddy daddy Ooh. it's a good time to be video game um i love this i i love this interview uh, from the washington post with uh phil spencer and i love anytime he's interviewed because you can tell he's just he just it's he's not putting on that gamer face and he's not adding anything to it he just likes video games and yeah. it's got this great list where he was he says, quote, I was looking at the IP list. I mean, let's go. King's Quest, Guitar Hero. I should know this, but I think they got Hexen. Like he's just <laughs> excited. <laughs> and and I think that's so awesome. Um yeah. to have someone it's like the person in charge of Charmin loves wiping their butt, you know? And they just <laughs> love talking about wiping their butt. We got no, these like, new trees we just bought. Yeah, oh and they're God. they're out there with the bears, <laughs> like rubbing their butts and stuff. Actually, you know what? Sorry, I not to continue on this, but like it is it is common. It is basically common that if you are in like the CEO, like that's your job that you kind of bounce between companies and you don't necessarily have to know anything about the product. You just do a lot of research and spin up on the job. And then all of a sudden you're an expert on air conditioning because now you're the CEO of an HVAC company, you know, and to have somebody who really is like, like there's a guy that I watch on, on YouTube who is super passionate about coffee and i just imagine like what if that guy was like the head of folgers like the ceo of folgers <laughs> just imagine how much better that company would be and I that's know. what it's like with phil spencer he's a great. gamer he knows it. like you're saying cloud save play anywhere game pass a subscription he's service. great he's just sitting there going i'm a gamer what would i love what makes sense for me let's go in that direction and it's it's incredible we should love uh, um we should have him on the show get him on get him oh on i i you know what i will email him um so just to finish off this section, I kind of wanted uh, what's your kind of like dream Activision Blizzard bring back either brand new game. Oh, let's stick with old IPs. If they're bringing an old IP or revamping a current IP, like what what do you want? I, I can go first, um, which isn't this isn't some grand thing or anything. And I haven't thought about it long, but I would love World of Warcraft 2. Just let's start over. Let's let's keep everything that worked. Let's build a new foundation. Let's flip it all back to zero and just do something cool. I honestly, I think that that would be something that would appeal to me because I always wanted to get into into WoW, and I I always felt like I missed the train on that one. Like I just it it was I was too young, or I you know I finally got into gaming at the wrong time, and it was it was too far in. I would love a jumping off point to to just be able to like, okay, I'm going to stick with this game for as long as they support it or as long as it stays interesting and relevant. I, I think that would be really cool. And um, I think a lot yeah. of people are in that boat because like, honestly, if you just went and loaded up World of Warcraft, you'd be jumping in, you'd be fine. It's mostly like a single player experience. If you, I mean, there's all that stuff. If you want to play with people online stuff, like you'd be perfect, but that's not the way people think. So if they hit that World of Warcraft 2, then people will be like, oh, and here's my chance to try that out. And yeah. it doesn't even have to be some sort of War World of Warcraft 2. I think even being like, hey, not the way Classic did it, but a different way being like, hey, we're revamping World of Warcraft. Here's a new set of servers with all, like you have to restart on it or whatever. And we're streamlining stuff and all that, uh, I think would be absolutely incredible. I I think for for me, just my sort of dream thing is I want a I want a new take on Call of Duty that has the time it needs to develop. Yeah, I don't I don't want a rushed Call of Duty. I want, hey, you need two and a half, three years, take two and a half, three years. Is it going to blow everyone's mind? Probably. And and hopefully. But you had the time to develop it because we were OK with waiting. 
And I think that yeah. that's that that breathing room that Microsoft hopefully will will allow those studios to develop that I think could come up with something. It could end up with something really cool that. And then I just want new Spyro stuff. I always like Spyro growing up. So mm -hmm. I just want new Spyro. I got to play those remasters. Mm, yeah, it's in here. Yeah. God, no, don't. What are you doing? Just wait for Game Pass. No, That's what I mean. I, like, I'm putting them on the uh, list. <laughs> I'm just I'm just putting in everybody's heads. Hey, you got an Activision Blizzard King game you want to play? Just wait a couple months. It'll be on Game Pass. Hashtag um, patient gamer. Yes. I think um I, I think Kyle I agree with you. Like I was literally just thinking, like, I don't I don't play Call of Duty anymore because it's gotten stagnant. There mm. it's it's hard for them to iterate. And when they do, they tend to iterate in a wrong way because they don't have time to actually iterate. They just kind of have to go in a direction and stick it because the game's gonna come out in a year or two. Yeah. Um I think I would get very, very excited if they literally just came out and said the next Call of Duty game is five years away. I'd be yeah. like I'd be okay. like sweet. Yeah. Cause cause they, they like I'm not a fan of the call of duty games but they are incredibly well polished and they're coming out every year so if they put all those teams together even half those teams and they just said y'all get together y'all playing your call of duty and you spend five years polishing it putting it out there really really doing something crazy i'd be like yeah that sounds fantastic um and then the other thing is all those projects that didn't happen for whatever reason i could totally see phil spencer coming in kind of like with the with a blank check and saying hey starcraft ghost make it happen or uh what was it project titan which was the sci-fi mmo from uh blizzard here's the check take your time make it happen mm -hmm. so for them to just be able to come in and kind of give all these crazy ideas and and to come in and say we're not worried about bottom line profit this year or next year or the third fiscal year from now just make it happen that's exciting there's a lot of dead projects in activision blizzard that yeah that that really should be made yeah uh, totally um yeah, it's gonna. It's it's so wild. I, and the other thing, just to tip off of your Call of Duty thing, I I'm so excited. There's so many Call of Duty games I haven't played that I can now yeah. play when they come to Game Pass because they're <laughs> never on sale ever. Yeah. And now they will be free. TM. Um, I am very excited about that. Um, that is our Activision Blizzard watch. Um, man, who knew they were gonna be so popular for a whole year? Um. <laughs> <laughs> son of a uh i'm just gonna That's do these good. last couple as a quick hit uh just to play us out here um just because nothing else compares to this um respawn uh isn't canceling a secret of third game after losing its director uh there were thoughts that they were canceling a game they were working on because the director left uh they are not disney and tencent announced a mobile avatar mmo is in the works avatar being james cameron's avatar uh a navi uh also very hard to find one of those with a for a thumbnail without boobs or genitalia of any kind leave them in um leave i in. i hid i hid the navi behind phil spencer uh to cover her up <laughs> on the thumbnail uh, and then finally, there's a report <laughs> of a live action Lost Judgment TV series in the works. Uh, Lost Judgment is the spinoff series that the Yakuza team is working on. I've heard it's pretty good. Just, just a quick note on that. The the star of the live of the Lost Judgment, the star of the Judgment video game <laughs> is a very famous actor in Japan. And apparently the TV series is also going to have that actor. So it, it feels like a nice. very one-to-one -one adaptation, which is awesome. Nice. Uh, and that is the news for the week of this week. Uh, I'm going to play the music here. You're not going to hear it yet, but then you're going to hear it. Folks! Activision Blizzard coming to Microsoft. It's fantastic. I can't believe it's happening. What I can believe is that you have listened to this local chat, which is probably incredible. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We will see you all on the Saturday, the Saturday minigame game show, 9 oh, p.m. Eastern. Boy. I'm not I on it, so I can't win again. Uh, I won I this 60 time. Note cards. 60 that, note cards. It's that time I won. I won. Actually, I've won twice.
Thank you. I won the battlefield and I won the... Oh, uh, he's up there. You can't see him. Cyberpunk boy. Boy, Cyberpunk sucks. What a terrible game. Folks, thank you so much for listening to this. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can go. Brings you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out all of our hot, hot content. So, at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Wherever you want it, we are there. Um, Ian Gibson, Kyle Bailey, thank you so much for tuning in. I love both of you dearly, uh, like a deer that I would hunt in the woods and shoot and stuff every night. Um, I'm Wrap waiting for the music to end, okay? Uh, I know, you missed timed it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should have started earlier, you know? I, I went into it too far. Too far, folks. Too far. Um, I got a new debit card and it's got Darth Vader on it, so that's pretty cool. Well, that is pretty cool. Yeah. What are the, what are the, what's the number? The number is, folks, we will see you all next week. 66.